Hey guys, I am back with the flood. <laughs> um, we are going to be covering Genesis 7 and 8. Um, these two chapters go together. They give you a lot of good information and kind of give you the details of the actual flood. So in Genesis 6, we talk through how to prepare for the flood and how God reached out to, well, not reached out, but talked to Noah and gave Noah the instructions for building an ark. And he told him about bringing these animals on board so that there would be two of every unclean animal and a pair of male and female so they could reproduce. And that there would be seven pairs of clean animals so that they would have animals available to reproduce. There would be animals available for food because they could eat clean animals and animals available for sacrifice because some of these animals would be sacrificed. Um, so... Um, we are going to jump right into this. It's Genesis, first book of the Bible, still second chapter, I'm sorry, seventh chapter. So this is Genesis seven and it starts off with God telling Noah to go into the ark, bring you and your household into this ark. I've seen you alone are righteous before me in this generation. You're the only person out here that is really following the rules and doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're the only person that has stood for what you believe in and has not been swayed by the evilness of this world. And I'm going to save you and I'm going to use you to rebuild the earth. That way I don't have to get down in here and dig in the dirt again and make more people. I'm going to use you and your household in order to do that. You stood righteously and you've been a righteous man in front of your children. And so they are in turn should be righteous as well. And he gives him the instruction to take those animals as discussed in the prior chapter. He's explaining it again and we're watching it kind of unfold at this point. And in verse four, it says, in seven days, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing will be blotted out from the face of the earth, will be destroyed. Everything that lives, everything that's alive, plants, plants trees, flowers, all of those things are included. Animals that walk, animals that fly. This water is going to be so high. It's literally going to wipe off life from this earth. I'm going to ball the whole earth up, throw it in the trash and start over effectively. And so in verse five, it says that Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. He did everything the Lord told him to do. He did it in the way God told him to do it when God told him to do it and he was spared because of his obedience. Obedience is key. You got to listen to what God tells you to do. Sometimes you're not going to have all the answers. Please believe Noah didn't have all the answers. He didn't know when the water was going to come, how much water was going to come, how everybody was going to die, how I'm going to live on earth after everybody else has been wiped out. He didn't have none of this, but he was obedient. So um, it says that Noah was 600 years old when the water started, when the flood began, he was 600 years old. So what he does is he follows the Lord's command. He goes inside of the ark. He brings the animals inside of the ark in the way that he was commanded. And after seven days, they sat for seven days in a boat with no water. Sometimes obedience is scary. And if it'll have you looking like a fool, I can assure you somebody knocked on the side of that boat and was like, sir, it's been set. It's been five days. It's been five days and you still in there with them stinking animals and you haven't gone anywhere. I know somebody did it. I know because they was evil. And that, that kind of tomfoolery is what evil people do. They going to pick with you about being obedient. And he had to sit there because God shut them in. God closed the door on this so that nobody could come in or go out. God closed the door on this. And in verse 11, it says in the 600th, 600th year of Noah's life, he was 600 years old. And it says in the six, second month on the 17th day, we are not getting into whether this is January, February, we're not getting into the calendar and, and how many months are in the calendar. And we're not getting into that because that's the weeds. Those things are unimportant to this part of this story. What is important is that we're going to mark the time. It is the second month. It is the 17th day of the second month. And it says that the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the windows of the heaven were open. When we listen to creation, when we see creation and it talked about the waters being separated by a firmament, there are waters above and there are waters below and they are separated. At this point, God said, I'm going to pull back that separation. 
And so the waters poured from above and they came up from the deep. If you have ever paid attention to science class, they talk about underwater volcanoes, underwater oceans, underwater rivers and things like that. Seems super weird because it's water underwater, but it has a different current and a different path and it moves in its own way. Guy said all the water from the deep come up and all the water from above go below. And so it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. We have had some very long rainy seasons. We have had some very long rainy periods where the rain literally falls and it falls for days and weeks at a time. What we have not had is the water coming up from the deep at the same time. And so there is no absorbing this water. So there, while there are floods, when we have water that comes down continuously for days, there's water coming up. So there's literally no room for the water to go. So it begins to stand on the earth. And we go from having short floods and small floods and flash floods to having absolute coverage of things. And this rain started. Everybody's in the ark. All the animals are in the ark. God shuts the door and they are sitting and waiting as this rain happens. And the flood continues, verse 17, for 40 days on the earth. The waters increased and it lifted the ark. This ark that is designed to carry a family of eight, it is designed to carry two of every kind of animal, seven of some of those, birds included, reptiles included, um, it, anything that walks on the earth, anything that is in the air, God has put two, at least two of those kinds, seven of some in this ark. So this thing is huge. When you get into the measurements of it, I believe it says it's like, three football fields long. Like this is a huge cruise ship full of stuff. We've seen some of these giant cruise ships. This is a huge cruise ship full of animals and people. And this now, the water has risen so much that it's starting to lift the ark up off the ground. And it rises it so high above the earth. This water continues to swell and increase that now it is above the mountains. It has completely covered the face of the earth that the mountains are covered. So we have miles and miles of water. When you think about how high these mountains go up, there are miles of water standing on the earth. And in verse 21, it says that all flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, swarming creatures, beasts of the earth, cattle, um, depending on which version of the Bible you're going to see. And it says human beings. God wipes everything off the earth everything off the earth. And it says that only Noah was left and what was in the ark with him. In verse 24, we're going to talk about it because it points out a very important time frame on this. Whenever I was taught about the flood, I was taught 40 days and 40 nights. That's how long the rain lasted. That is not how long the flood lasted. The water does not recede immediately. It wasn't designed to, and it doesn't do it here. So in verse 24, it says the water swelled on the earth for 150 days, 150 days. So we started out, <laughs> we started out in the 17th day of the second month. And we're getting ready to pick up on the timeline in verse four. But verse one says, God remembered Noah and all the animals. Even though he was angry, even though he had washed everything off the earth, he remembered they were in there. And after a time period, it said God made a wind blow. And it'll start, it started to make the water subside. They started to retreat back into their oceans. They started to retreat back into the ground. It started to move and settle so that now the, this ark is starting to lower. It's no longer resting on the water at sea, off the float, wherever they are. But the waters are starting to recede so that the ark is being lowered down to the ground. And it says that um, the rain stopped. So not only was the water starting to recede back from the deep where it came from, the rain has stopped. And that at the end of 150 days, the waters had fully abated. So it says in the seventh month, the 17th day of the seventh month, we are five months later, five months later, the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. It is resting in the mountains. It took five months to get the water low enough for it to, 
for the mountains to be exposed. So we still don't have dry land on the ground because these mountains are up high. So we still don't have dry, solid land and valleys and places like that. That's still very much wet. And so it says it continues to abate until the 10th month. We started in the second month and now we are in the 10th month. And then it says that the tops of the mountains are appearing. So while the bottom of the boat could sit, so if the mountains are sitting like this, the bottom of the boat could sit here. There's still water above and below. It's just not enough water to continue to lift the ark up because of its weight and its size. So now we're starting to see the top of the mountains. We are in the 10th month. We have been on this boat for eight months. Not we, no and them, because thank you, Jesus. This is my time. <laughs> but eight months they've been in this boat on the sea, rocking with the waters. And now they're resting. And now they're starting to be able to see out. If you're able to look out, you can see the mountaintops appearing. And then it says in verse six, at the end of 40 days. So there is now 40 days after the 10th month when it began to rest that Noah opened the window and he sent out a raven. And this raven went to and fro and it just flew and flew and flew and flew until the waters were dried up from the earth enough for it to land and build a nest and a life and whatever it's going to do. Now, this raven flew and flew and flew and moved around and did what it's going to do. Ravens are considered unclean. They are unclean because ravens are kind of scavenging animals. They, they, they survive off of what they find. They eat meat. <laughs> they don't just exist off of, you know, the vegetation and maybe a little insect here or there, but they actually eat meat. So this raven was able to survive in some environments that a clean bird wouldn't, like a dove who doesn't eat the same, eat the same food. And so it says in verse eight that he sent out the dove from him. And I'm, I've jumped into Genesis eight. I hope y'all caught that when I changed over, I switched, my number started getting big and they got small again. So I am in Genesis eight, um, verse eight. And he says, he sent out a dove from him to see if the water had subsided from the ground. Like have you, has the water moved enough that we have the vegetation and plant life that you need in order to survive? And the dove found no place to set its foot. These trees are still young. These trees that, that survived don't have leaves. They are flooded and damaged and, and, and wet and soggy and not functioning properly. I, I can't live out here. I got to come on back to where you are. Noah, go and let me back in the window because I can't survive out here. I don't have what I need. And so it returned to the ark in verse 9. And so he took him back in. Is we not ready yet. Okay. Come on back in. Go and get you something to eat. Rest yourself. I know you've been flying pretty hard. I'm glad you found your way back. Um, because we're, you're, the earth's not ready for us yet. And so he waited another seven days and then he sent the dove out again. And in verse 11, it says, when he came back, he had a freshly plucked olive leaf. This olive leaf came back. This is a sign that now the plants are growing. There are leaves. This is healthy and that it's not, it, it's a freshly plucked leaf means that it's growing on the vine. It's not a leaf off the ground. It's not something that's dead and dying. It is something that is symbolizing new life. There is, there is newness about the earth and it's coming back. And so Noah knew that the waters had subsided. So we're two weeks in from the 40 days from the, like, so from the, from the 10th month, we're 40 days and then there's two weeks because we went seven days and the dove came back and with nothing. And in the next seven days, we waited and then the dove came back with an olive leaf. And so he waited another seven days. So that's 21 days in total. That three sevens is 21 days. And he sent out the dove and the dove did not come back. So at this point, the dove has been out and has found not only signs of new life, but enough life and vegetation and, and what he needed to survive that this dove is okay building a nest and going to live his life. And so in verse 13, he says in the 601st year of Noah's life, he was 600 when he got on the ark. He is now in his 601st year. And it says on the first day, 
of the first month. So we started out on the 17th day of the second month, and we are now at the first day of the first month. We are just, you know, 47 quick days away from being one year. And it says the waters were dried up on the earth and Noah removed the covering, that roof that he had put on the ark. Um, he removed and he looked and he saw the face of the ground was dry. And it says in the second month on the 27th day of the month. We started on the second month on the 17th day. And now we are at the second month on the 27th day. We have been on this ark for over a year. Over a year. Over a year for 40 days and 40 nights of rain. Over a year of waiting for the earth to recover. And God tells Noah to get out of the ark with your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring with you all the living creatures that you have on the ark. Come on out, it's safe. Come on out. Ali, ali, oxen free. Everybody can go. And this is now a time and a space where you all can abound on earth. I need you to be fruitful. I need you to multiply. I need you to come on off this boat and I need you to go live your lives because now it's on you and these animals to again, rebuild these species. And so of course on verse 18, they got out of there. God said, I can go, I'm gone. And all the animals went with them and everybody leaves. And in verse 20, Noah does something really important. He built an altar to the Lord and he took every clean animal and every clean bird and offered a burnt offering on the altar. He went to church. He worshiped God. He stopped. A lot of times we talk about Noah getting drunk. And I'm not going to say that he didn't because he did. We're going to talk about that in just a, in, in just a few, a few short uh, passages. We're going to get to that. But for right now, the very first thing he did when he stepped off that ark is he thanked God. He worshiped the Lord. He stopped and he said, I'm not going to worship you a little bit. I'm going to give you everything I got. He gave him one of every clean bird and every clean animal. And he created this sacrifice and put it out. When you come out of something, the first thing you should do is worship. It doesn't matter if you were protected from the storm the entire time. It doesn't matter. The reality is, is that you did not have to be protected in that way. And you got to worship. You got to praise. You got to thank the Lord for bringing you through. And that's the very first thing he did. He took it all. He said, I'm going to give you one of everything. I want to make sure I get this right. You're going to see my appreciation, Lord, because you didn't have to, but you definitely saved me and my household. And so in verse 21, it says, the Lord smelled a sweet savor, a pleasing odor. The Lord smelled his sacrifice. He put all that good meat on uh on that on that burnt offering he smelled that and god was like you know what i will never again curse the ground i am not going to again curse my earth because of humans not listening y'all act a fool again you in trouble by yourselves and it says again for the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth or depending on which version you have the inclinations of the human heart your thoughts your heart is evil from your youth. I will never destroy everything else again. I won't do it. I won't do it again. As long as the earth endures, as long as the, the systems that I put into place, that seed time and harvest, that cold and that heat, the summer and winter, night and day, as long as these things continue to follow and be obedient, I'm not going to curse them because they did what they were supposed to do. This is the second time I have cursed my ground because of humans acting a fool and I'm not going to keep tearing up my stuff because they don't know how to act. You're going to be in trouble on your own. I'm not going to keep taking, I'm not going to cut the cable off in my house because my kids keep watching stuff they're not supposed to watch. I'm not going to shut the Wi-Fi down because my kids won't stay off. No, no, no. You're going to be by yourself, friend. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to have this earth that I created. I'm going to have these nice things. So like a parent, God is like, I'm not going to keep shutting my whole house down. I'm not going to be punished with you. I'm not going to punish your younger siblings with you. It's going to be you. When you're responsible, it's on you. And I'm going to let you bear that on your own. So Quick recap, and then I'm going to get out of here. So first, God called Noah, told Noah, this is what I want you to do. I'm getting ready to blot everybody off this earth. I'm sick of their foolishness. Their hearts are evil, and I'm not going to tolerate it no more. I'm going to go and let them go. And so um, he 
tells Autumn, tell Autumn, sorry, tells Noah to build an ark. And when he tells Noah to build the ark, he has this ark that's created. They bring in two of every unclean animal, male and female. And he brings in seven pairs of every clean animal. And they go into this ark. They wait for seven days. And then the rain starts. And the rain starts. It rains for 40 days and 40 nights. It comes from above and from below. The deep opens up from below and the waters come up as well. And so these waters rise enough to lift this ark high above the mountains. And the earth sits and it it stays wet. And God makes sure that everything is blotted off this earth. Everything that is living is wiped off of this earth. Um, and then there is a time period where the water sits and rests on the earth. And then God sends a wind and the water begins to abate. And when the water abates and it, or subsides or starts to decrease and be absorbed back into clouds through, you know, back into clouds or back into the ground. And when that happens, um, the, the ark begins to rest in the mountains. And once at, at some time has passed there, that Noah sends out a raven and this raven just flies around and kind of scavenges and does what it's doing and it doesn't come back to the ark. But he sends out a, a dove and this dove goes out the first time it comes back with nothing because he can't find any place to land. The second time this dove goes out, it comes back with an olive leaf, olive leaf, letting him know that new life is coming, that there is a promise of something new that is happening. We're just waiting for it to be finished. And then the third time he sends out this dove, um, it comes, it does not come back. So he knows that the earth is almost ready. So he goes ahead, takes that roof off that ark, takes a look out and sees that this ground is drying or almost dry. And a time passes that they wait. And so they spend, they start on the 17th day of the second month and the flood ends where they are able to leave the ark on the 27th day of the second month, exactly a year later. They are one year on this ark during this flood. And when they come off, the very first thing that Noah does is he builds an altar and he sacrifices one of every clean animal on that ark. He sacrifices them all and he praises and worships God for bringing him through. And when he does that, God says, look, I'm not going to continue to curse my earth because of humans acting a fool. Y'all act a fool. Y'all going to be in trouble on your own. Y'all got evil hearts. Y'all ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And now y'all got evil in your hearts and it continues to rest there. And I'm not going to keep destroying absolutely everything I did. I did a good job. I'm not going to keep tearing my stuff up because y'all don't know how to act. And that is our recap. We are going to talk about the very next thing that happens following that. And there's a new covenant between Noah and God. And we're going to talk about that in the next video. But for now, you guys have a fantastic week. Have a great one. Bye.